mercy on us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity, and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred, and malice, and from all evil intents, Savior, deliver us. From soft worldliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, Savior, deliver us. From the sins of body and mind, from deceits of the world, flesh, and the devil, Savior, deliver us. From famine and disaster, from violence, murder, and dying unprepared, Savior, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death, and at the day of judgment, Savior, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood, and obedience, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, Savior, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power, by the preaching of your name, Savior, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, Savior, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, Savior, deliver us. Hear our prayers, O Christ our God. Hear us, O Christ. Govern and direct your holy church, fill it with love and truth, and grant it that unity which is your will. Hear us, O Christ. Give us boldness to preach the gospel in all the world, and to make disciples of all the nations. Hear us, O Christ. Enlighten your bishops, priests, and deacons, especially Michael and Greg, with knowledge and understanding, that by their teaching and their lives they may proclaim your word. Hear us, O Christ. Give your people grace to witness to your word and bring forth the fruit of your spirit. Hear us, O Christ. Bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived. Hear us, O Christ. Strengthen those who stand, comfort and help the faint-hearted, raise up the fallen, and finally beat down Satan under our feet. Hear us, O Christ. Guide the leaders of the nation into the ways of peace and justice. Hear us, O Christ. Give your wisdom and strength to Joseph, the President of the United States, and Jay, the Governor of this state, that in all things they may do your will for your glory and the common God. Hear us, O Christ. Leave to the Congress of the United States, the members of the President's Cabinet, those who serve in our state legislature, and all others in authority, the grace to walk always in the ways of truth. Hear us, O Christ. Bless the justices of the Supreme Court and all those who administer the law that they may act with integrity and do justice for all your people. Hear us, O Christ. Give us the will to use the resources of the earth to your glory and for the good of all. Hear us, O Christ. Bless and keep all your people. Hear 
hear us, O Christ. Comfort and liberate the lonely, the bereaved, and the oppressed. Hear us, O Christ. Keep in safety those who travel and all who are in peril. Hear us, O Christ. Heal the sick in body, mind, or spirit, and provide for the homeless, the hungry, and the destitute. Hear us, O Christ. God, and protect all children who are in danger. Hear us, O Christ. Shower your compassion on prisoners, hostages, and refugees and all who are in trouble. Hear us, O Christ. Forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and turn their hearts. Hear us, O Christ. Hear us as we remember those who have died, and grant us with them a share in your eternal glory. Hear us, O Christ. Give us true repentance. Forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance and our deliberate sins. And grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your word. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Next, we are going to have uh, my children, uh, the Riley household, lead us in um, our Sunday blessing which is in the home kits that folks received for Lent at home. Dear God, here we are. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Beloved, flawed, beautiful, failing, and trying again to be your people in the world. Forgive the wrongs we have done, and the good we have left undone. Amen. 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 Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my child, the beloved, with you, I am well pleased. So can you help me say this together here? We pray for all in our church. So say it with me, okay? We pray for all in our church family at Emmanuel. May God be with all of us in darkness and in light. Amen. Amen. Hi, Mommy. Even family is really important in these days. Hi, Mommy. Hi, Mimi. We continue on page four. God be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed son was led by the spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, as for me, I'm establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. 
God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will pray the psalm responsibly. <clears throat> to you, O oh Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O oh Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And teaches his way to the lowly. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. To those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. A reading from the first epistle of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which we also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, the Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. 
And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descend like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's fascinating to note where exactly in the gospel of Mark we are today. Now, it's the beginning of Lent. We're in the first Sunday in the season of Lent, walking our way towards the story of Holy Week, the death and resurrection of Christ. We are reading Mark chapter 1, verse 9. The story has barely even begun. We've, we're only eight verses in. That is where Mark starts us today. It's almost as though at the beginning of Lent, we are beginning the entirety of Christ's story. Mark does not include a, a birth narrative. Instead, starting with baptism. And theoretically, the center of the gospel today is supposed to be about the temptation in the desert. Now, that's a story that we probably have some imagery around because other gospels expand on it quite a bit, talking about the various ways in which Satan asked Jesus to prove that he is the son of God. Even our opening collect for today references that today is about that temptation. The collect of the day is the opening prayer in our bulletin, it's on page four, and it always connects in some way to the reading, especially to the gospel. It sort of is the summary of here's the point of today and what we're praying about. But listen again to this collect. Almighty God, whose blessed son was led by the spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know, the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, our son, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now, hear again exactly what our gospel says about the temptation. He was in the wilderness for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. That's it. Two sentences, three maybe, given to the story of the temptation, which is theoretically the point of which we're praying about. And Mark gives us very little detail. It's almost a footnote in the story. That thing happened, but more importantly, look at what comes before and after. While we're given really no description of the temptation in the wilderness, we are given the voice that comes from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And we have the words of Jesus himself. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. It's interesting to see how the gospel of Mark focuses our attention by how much ink is given to different parts of the story. The temptation is less important than what God says and what Christ says. Now, Mark is known for getting to the point. This is not a lengthy gospel given to much uh, descriptors. It helps focus us in on perhaps the heart of some of these stories. And it's fascinating that the actual words spoken by members of the Trinity trump what could be a very complex imaginative story that certainly other gospels spend a great deal more time on. Asking Jesus to throw himself from the cliffs or to make bread out of nothing. It's a fascinating story that has a lot of imagery we could pull from, but for Mark, that is not what we focus on. 
The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is a gospel full of good news. This is a gospel where we have the heavens breaking open and naming Jesus as the son of God and we're being told that the kingdom is coming and no matter the amount of oppression or brokenness in the world, we are being asked and told and promised hope. Good news. Good news isn't always how we think of Lent. Lent we think of often as this uh, mandatory sad time, (laughs) a moment when we are meant to reflect upon our broken nature. But this gospel puts that brokenness of not our nature, but of the world in relationship with the hope of a different sort of future. Part of the brokenness of the world, the need to repent, is this hierarchical structure that has oppressed and traumatized the people of God, where systems of power and authority have been abused and people have suffered for it. It is a system that is so ingrained in us in society of rulership over the people that it's difficult to articulate a language or a way of being that could be anything different. Even our gospels talk of replacing the powers that be with the kingdom of God, yet another power, another patriarchal power, male-driven power, to replace the system we're used to. Trade out one authoritarian for another. It is so ingrained in us that it is difficult to see anything but a hierarchy. But our gospel is calling us to good news. And perhaps there is good news to be found if we can break free even from the ways in which our gospel writers imagined that we should envision the kingdom of God. It's common for uh, modern theologians, especially if we try to break away from male-dominated language, to rather than say kingdom of God, to say kingdom of God, to take out the gendered language, to see something that is more inclusive, kingdomship to be kin to one another. What would it look like if the kingdom of God was not about authority and ruling? What if it did nothing to replace that which we are used to, but rather abolish that which we are used to? An outside power that we're not waiting to come in and take over and tell us what to do but that we are inviting in and co-creators of and co-leaders of. I hope you all were listening as we heard the great litany enacted this morning. For a moment, as I closed my eyes and heard the chanting, I could almost imagine us all in this space. It made my skin tingle to hear the bell. And I thought, yes, this is how we co-create the kingdom. The way in which our voices and our prayers and our music swirl together to form liturgy and ritual space and time and the essence of God amongst us That is how we become co-creators of the kingdom. We are not receivers, but participants in making that reality present here and now. We are empowered to build something different and beautiful and full of good news because we know that Jesus is the son of God And we are the children of God 
empowered and called to create this beautiful and wondrous world. A very small handful of us gathered this past Wednesday for our first in-person liturgy in almost a year. There were only nine of us, 10 if you include baby Peter. But the palpable sense of God's presence was undeniable. And that's not because things are more holy when we are in person, but that we were able to lean into the relationships we build. And it is those very connections that create the kingdom. Yes, easier to do in person, but this morning as we chanted and prayed, I recognize there is no barrier that we cannot overcome to build up that kingdom. Because even through our screens, we built something beautiful and holy and filled with the spirit of God. May that good news live within us, stir within us and our spirits that holy joy and that good news that this year more than ever is what should drive us through this season and these stories because it is just the beginning. We are only in chapter one. There's a lot more to hear and to know, but we hear it and we know it with the knowledge and the lived experience of good news found in one another in God's presence. Amen. We continue together on page eight, professing our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Virtually, we greet one another. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. As we gather to listen to our offertory, I'll remind you that in the bulletin, there are instructions of how you can text to give. This is our virtual passing of the plate, the way in which we can continue to sustain ministry here. Um, just so you know, you can pay your pledge through text to give You can pay your pledge uh, through the website or checks in the mail or give a, a, a non-pledge offering through any of those means. Um, the great uh, work that we do and the ministry we do and the way in which we are starting to build towards our regathering are all possible because of your gifts. And so thank you for all the ways in which you support Emmanuel.
We continue together on page nine, professing our faith in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And we pray for spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. A desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul. Since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood. Come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and the life to come. Amen. Do we have any birthdays to celebrate this day? I know we didn't get to read them during um, our normal prayers of the people since those are replaced by the great litany um today let's see if i can find the list of birthdays unless anyone wants to shout out uh frank young melissa loy both of you have birthdays this week and this past week was kathleen's birthday She's somewhere, she's waving from the corner. Well, for the, is there anyone else or any anniversaries we need to celebrate or want to celebrate? All right, let us pray together the birthday prayer. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may your peace, which passes all understanding, abide all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite us all to bow before the Lord. Grant, almighty God, that your people may recognize their weakness and put their whole trust and strength and so that they may rejoice forever in the protection of your loving providence through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we will join together in our closing hymn, which I will share. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.